Your next comic coming to the stage, all the way from Steamboat. It's very funny. Give it up for Kyle Ruff. <laughs> Keep it up with BK, everybody. <laughs> Holy shit, Boulder. So glad to be here. I just drove six hours here through traffic and I had to piss the whole time, so please pity laugh at my jokes, even if they're bad. Thank you very much. <laughs> Holy shit. Yes, my name is Kyle Ruff. Uh, a little bit about me, as you can tell, I was once described as a combination of Freddie Mercury and a garden gnome. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, it blew your mask off, buddy. Damn. See, uh, another more creative friend, he described me as a combination of a frat boy and a sea otter. <laughs> I said, I'm going to get a double honk out of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I uh, live in Steamboat Springs. I'm originally from the Midwest. That's why I rock my Michigan hat. i got to wear it backwards, though, because if I wear it forward, I'm the third Mario brother. Very <laughs> <laughs> right, good luck. Go Luigi, I call it. That's stupid. <laughs> I'm from Steamboat Springs. Anyone here been to Steamboat Springs? <laughs> right on. Right on. For those who haven't, uh, I'll give you some insights. Steve Springs, uh, it's full of a bunch of dumb hipsters with no kids. And so, they all have dogs, and that's fine, I love dogs. My name's Kyle Ruff, get real. But... <laughs> yes! <laughs> Please move the steam up and come to all of my shows, so... It's like hitting the honk button. <laughs> Uh, I feel like the mask is on, so if he took it off, it would just blow everyone's headphones out. You're an animal. <laughs> Sir, let me tell you about Steve. I want you to be calm while I do this, okay? <laughs> so, Steve Moe's big everyone has dogs, and I love dogs, and that's fine. But the weird part is, all the dogs have human names. There's no Rufus or Fido at the dog park. It's like, good boy, Russell. Come here, Dominic. Like, the dogs have more normal names than the owners do. I met this guy at the dog park. He's like, hi, my name's Dakota. This is my dog, Steve. <laughs> this is the best I... Best audience I've ever had in my life, and by audience I mean this guy. <laughs> I love you, sir. Can you adopt me, please? Oh my god, I want to take you on the road. It's my secret, my hawk ace in the hole, is this guy. <laughs> oh, Steamboat is interesting, it's a tourist town, so you get people from all over come there. Uh, one time we were doing a comedy show right before we started. Six Fully robed Tibetan monks walked by the front door. I swear to God. I was talking to the door guy, I was like, what's that all about? He's like, oh yeah, they, they come once a year. And I was like, I didn't think they were allowed that many times. <laughs> that was a late honk. I got a little honk at the end. <laughs> See, it's also becoming gentrified. Uh, which, if you don't know, is a fancy term for rich people and poor people being sandwiched together against their will. It's a beautiful thing. And it's weird for me because I swim in both circles. I have a fancy pants day job at the resort, and at night, I'm a degenerate piece of shit. So, I see it all. I'll go from these uh, marketing meetings where we talk about how we need to uh, market our trademark champagne powder. Yes, there's a trademark on the snow. No, I don't understand how the fuck that works. <laughs> I say, oh, you might have trademark champagne powder to bring in the high end clientele. And I say, <laughs> yes, blah, blah, blah. And then I go across the street to a dive bar called Double Diamonds, where my buddy Larry markets every other kind of powder you could want. Um, his cocaine has a trademark, too. It's called Surprise, it's meth. It's all meth. Also popular with the high end clientele. <laughs> And it's gentrified, it's expensive. I've been trying to pick up extra work. Uh, I actually got a side gig uh, at a bachelorette party as a stripper. Yeah! They were less enthusiastic when I showed up. They're like, we're paying to see this naked, tiny little sea otter, are you serious? It's a waste. 
But I was prepared because, you know, stripping and comedy are very similar, you know. It's both ways. You use your body to try to make other people happy and disappoint your parents. Well, <laughs> came naturally. Both get a lot of feedback, too. But I can, like, I can handle a heckler to show. You're stripping, you pull out your dick, it gets booed, there's no coming back from that. You gotta wrap it up. I got, I got another job offer. Uh, this lady emailed me and she's like, hey, can you dress as a superhero and come to my nine-year-old's birthday party? And I was like, listen, lady, I'm not that kind of stripper. That's kind of fucked up. That's messed up. <laughs> Anyways, another fun thing about Steamboat is that women don't live there. Yeah, there's a lot of dudes in Steamboat. And it's tough. And it's tough because the few that are left have these lofty standards, right? I tried to talk to this girl in the bar and she was like, I was like, how's it going? She's like, Psh, no way. You're right. I only talk to guys in the Stick Sticks Fix Club. You guys know what that is? Do we have any members? Maybe this handsome devil over here. So, 66 of guys that are six feet tall. No, that makes one of us. Six figure income. No, oh boy. Here's a big one though, pun intended. Six inch penis. Hey, he's got one. You're broke, but you're rich in cock, sir. Well done. But it's tough for me, like, I can maybe do the 555 club on a good day. It depends a lot on the temperature of where Bitcoin's at, you know, it's very volatile. It's not good right now, I think I'm rocking like a 543, I'll let you guys figure out which one's which. It's not good. Oh man. I, and the dating online is even worse, I get, keep getting screwed over on that. I did a match with a girl the other day. And she was like, I'm into politics and I feel the burn. And I was like, oh, okay, right on, I'm into politics. A Bernie Sanders supporter, I can work with that. And then she gave me gonorrhea. Uh, turns out it was a completely different burn. That didn't work out. Anyways, speaking of politics, I don't know, politics is driving everyone fucking crazy these days. We tried to do an open mic a couple years ago in Steamboat, and before we started, this girl came up, she had me, and she was like, um, we want to come back later and with my mom, but she can't do Trump. She just can't handle Trump. And I was like, what, is he here somewhere? Like, this doesn't look like a golf course, I don't know what you're talking about. She was like, no. Uh, she just can't handle anything pro-Trump. Are you pro-Trump? Is your comedy pro-Trump? I said, no, but, uh, I didn't even think that was an option. I don't know, you guys see a lot of pro-Trump comedians doing well? <laughs> I don't even think I've seen a Republican do comedy since Larry the Cable Guy quit doing Zantac commercials in 2006. <laughs> what are you talking about? And so I was like, no. And she was like, okay, we'll come back later. And I said, get her done. And they didn't come. I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah, Trump, that fucking guy, he's back in the news again, bothering us all. But there's one thing that happened recently that exposed the one good thing about Trump. And that is that Trump is a conspiracy theorist. And I like that shit, you guys. I swear to God, he was just in Saudi Arabia for this fucking golf whatever. And a reporter was like, uh, Mr. President, are you comfortable being in Saudi Arabia? You know, the government that was complicit in 9-11? And he just goes, we don't know who did 9-11. I was like, oh shit! Oh shit, you can't say that shit! You can't say that shit! I swear to God, if Trump came out tomorrow and was like, listen, if you vote for me, I'll tell you which senators are lizard people. I'd be like, Don, don't I need to know? I got to know. Can I vote right now? I'll vote right now. See, I want our taxes going to something useful, not the environment or education. Now, we got to be looking into all these Illuminati spy drones flying around, or as you sheep call them, birds. I'm not buying that shit. I'm buying that shit. Yeah, you fooled, not me. Another thing driving people crazy, obviously, is COVID. You know, a few people got a little crazy about COVID. But I was never worried, you know why? Because I'm young. And it turns out that COVID hates old people. Uh. I, find, 
<laughs> but you're safe, sir. You can honk all the way to the grave, COVID free, baby. <laughs> No, it's true, it's for the old. I found out that the median age of death from COVID is higher than the median age of death. Yeah. That's right, COVID-19 is tearing through nursing homes faster than STDs are tearing through nursing homes. Yeah, you forgot what they're doing in there. They're banging each other. And why not? Why not bang into the grave? It's not even gonna baby out of grandma's dusty old uterus now, are you, huh? And Grandpa's money shot it looks like a paleontologist blowing the dust off a 2,000-year-old petrified slug. Just a puff of gray smoke, like... <laughs> looks like a gender reveal party for a miscarriage, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But uh, Trump sucks, and he says a lot of hateful things. I don't think we should hate each other. I think we should all love each other. Except... There is one group of people that I fucking hate, you guys. I fucking hate, I'm gonna tell you, okay? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? <laughs> the people I hate are natives. But no, I don't mean to be confusing. Native Americans, they're cool. What I mean is yuppie white people from places like, I don't know, Boulder, Colorado, <laughs> who are like, oh, everyone's moving out west. So they slap that pretentious Colorado native bumper sticker on their car? Go fuck yourselves. Fuck you. They're so proud, like, oh, what did your dad move here to do cocaine and ski 30 years before I moved here to do cocaine and ski? Well, what an accomplishment. You did it. Native my ass. What's your tribe? Is it Patagonia? Blow me. That's not a peace pipe, that's a dab rig, and you're an asshole, chat. I don't care about your opinion. See, I'm from the Midwest. If you want to know if you're a local, you don't need a sticker. You can tell by the rust that's already on the bumper. And then the fat, diabetic fingers flicking a cigarette out the window. Because we fucking hate the environment in the Midwest. It's cold and it's sad, and there's literally medical conditions around it. Now, if you want to be a real Colorado native, you should be like me, skiing every weekend, Doing surprise meth with your six male roommates and hanging out with your dog Philip. Am I right? All right, thanks, guys. That's all my time. Thank you. Here we go, Kyle Ryan.